Anwar Ibrahim loses final appeal. World's funniest person returns home. Hi, I'm Suhaila Saifuddin with Kappa News Brewed especially for you. Former opposition leader Datuk Sri Anwar Ibrahim will remain in jail after the federal court rejected his bid for a review of his second sodomy conviction. Anwar has exhausted all avenues to set aside his five-year jail term for sodomizing his former aide, Muhammad Saiful Buhari Azlan. He was, however, optimistic, telling reporters from the dock of the federal court that it was not the end of the road. The Apex Court's five-man panel, chaired by Chief Judge of Malaya, Justice Zulkifli Ahmad Makinuddin, earlier rejected Anwar's application for a review of his conviction on grounds that there were no merits for the application. Jadi, Alhamdulillah, uh, pada saya ataupun yang berlaku hari ini, bila masa kita jelas dengan status beliau sebagai seorang yang tidak bersalah, dan seperti kemas suah perompak negara sedia ada, maka kita kami berdiri dengan penuh bangga insyaAllah untuk menuntut keadilan dan perjuangan yang teruskan. So, we are getting a copy of the full judgment, then we will get a clearer picture of what exactly are the reasons uh, that the court has advanced. They will be applying for the judgment, we should get it very fast, I think. Since obviously, they have already got it written, 62 pages they said. So, as soon as we study the judgment, we will announce our next course of action, as soon as possible. Outside the court, Anwar's wife, Datuk Sri Dr. Wan Azizah Wan Ismail, addressed the crowd of disappointed supporters, urging them to remain steadfast and uphold their struggle. In Miri, a Sarawakian businessman classified by the police as the main suspect in the mafia-style killing of land activist Bill Kayong was charged with abetting the murder at the magistrate's court. Datuk Stephen Lee Chi Kiang was on the run for six months before he was arrested in Fujian, China on Monday with the help of Chinese authorities and Interpol. He arrived at the airport this morning under heavy police escort. Lee, together with Lee Chang Lun, Ching Wei Chung and another person still at large, were accused of abetting Muhammad Fitri Pauzi in gunning down Kayong at a traffic light intersection on June 21st. No plea was recorded and the court fixed December 30th for case mention. Kayong, also Miri PKR secretary, was actively involved in fighting for native land rights in the state. In Penang, a bodyguard who went on a shooting spree at the Tun Dr. Lim Chong Yu Expressway two weeks ago was slapped with nine charges at three courts. At the magistrate's court, Jafar Halid was charged under the penal code with the murder of his boss Dato Ong Tek Kwong and two others. No plea was recorded and the court fixed January 16 for case mentioned pending a chemist report. The 37-year-old was then charged at the Sessions Court with the attempted murder of four people and injuring Ong's driver at another magistrate's court. His pleas were not recorded in the second and third court as he was ordered to be sent to the hospital Bahagia in Tanjung Rambutan for a month-long psychiatric observation. What do you call an alligator in a vest? An investigator! Do you get it? Okay, let's leave the jokes to the funniest person in the world, Harith Iskandar, who arrived home from Lapland this morning. The 50-year-old comedian held a news conference at KLIA right after his arrival from Finland, where he had beaten 89 other contestants from 56 countries to win the title. His performance, which was streamed live on Laugh Factory's YouTube channel to a worldwide audience for online voting, received 3.6 million votes. Harith avoided making jokes on religion, politics or that of a sexual nature and yet still came out on top. And so for them, it's not used, they use that as normal. And I said, I'm from Malaysia, we have different cultural values, different cultural norms. I've been doing it for 26 years. That you know, the skill is to be able to be funny without using that. I said in my country, I do I use comedy to unify people. If there's a hundred people in the room and a hundred people are laughing, that means you cannot fight. So that's that's why I do comedy, and that's why I continue to do it, and that's why I'm so happy that I won the competition. That I have a chance to now take this on a bigger stage. 
He also assured fans that his heart was still very much in Malaysia and there was no plan to move overseas despite his latest accomplishment. As winner of the coveted title, Harith backed 100,000 US dollars and a comedy tour in the United States. Also making headlines on Thursday, two Malaysians have been selected as finalists in MIT Technology Review's Innovator Under 35 list. The list recognises development of new technology or creative use of existing technology to solve global problems. Public health physician Dr. Desi Baharaja and MIT postdoctoral associate Yong Lin Kong are listed among 10 young researchers and entrepreneurs nominated from Southeast Asia, Taiwan, Australia and New Zealand by MTAC Asia in association with MIT Technology Review. The 10 award recipients will pitch their work at the MTAC Asia Conference, MIT Technology Review's annual conference in Singapore mid-February next year. Several NGOs lodged a police report over a forged letter purportedly issued by Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr Ahmad Zahid Hamidi urging the Prime Minister to resign. Martabak Jalinan Muhibah President Abdul Rani Kulub Abdullah who represented the NGOs urged the police to act against the writer of the forged letter. The groups also want the police to investigate G25 for proposing that punishment for close proximity be abolished citing infringement of rights. A 17-year-old girl has been left traumatised after a full-size billboard fell on her house in Kampung Pelagong, Labu. Nordayana Atirah Maulud was struck by fragments from the 28-metre high billboard and suffered injuries on her leg and body. Dan sekarang, keadaannya masih trauma lah. Masih trauma. Walaupun keadaannya boleh dikatakan sehat juga lah nampaknya. Cuma tapi daripada segi mental dia agak tak berapa bagus. Dia jadi seorang yang pendiam. Maulud added that he had made a report to the Nilai Municipal Council on the billboard being too close to his house two weeks ago. The leaders of Malaysia and India held a 30-minute live video teleconference for the first time at the inaugural Asian Business Leaders Conclave. In his remarks, Datuk Sri Najib Tun Razak praised Indian Prime Minister Sri Narendra Modi for being a bold reformist in bringing change to India. Najib also noted that Malaysia and India shared a good friendship and strong economic ties. Patients at PD Jaya General Hospital in Bandar Aceh had to be moved outdoors after the building was declared unsafe due to the December 7th earthquake. Victoria Brown reports. Um, I'm here at a hospital in PD Jaya. It's one of their main hospitals and as you can see behind me, the destruction is quite severe, so a lot of mobile clinics have been set up, like the one behind me, and all the patients are um, have to uh, be in the corridor um, rather than in the buildings because it's not safe for them. So if you can see behind me, there are a number of um, beds just being laid out with uh, patients, uh, all the new, uh, just lying down in the corridors without any fans or um, any privacy. The hospital was declared unsafe after parts of the building collapsed and large cracks appeared around the building. Tents have been set up outside the hospital to distribute medicine and provide outpatient treatment. However, those in critical condition and patients who require surgery will be transferred to other hospitals. Indonesian Red Cross said that 80 to 90 percent of the buildings in PD Jaya were damaged during the earthquake, including mosques, shops, and houses. As you can see behind me, the, one of the main mosques in PD Jaya was also destroyed in the earthquake. Right now, they are cleaning up the area and they will soon begin restoration works. When the earthquake struck just after 5 a.m. on December 7th, many people were still asleep or preparing for morning prayers. Hundreds ran out of their homes when the tremors started, but sadly, not everyone escaped in time. As of now, the earthquake has claimed 102 lives and injured 970. 
and more than half of the population here at Pitijaya has been displaced. A week has now passed since the earthquake and residents here are slowly starting to clear the rubble and build anew. I'm Victoria Brown in PD Jaya Banda Ache reporting for Star TV. In other news, civilians and rebel fighters were to start evacuating from Syria's Aleppo on Wednesday under a deal that would end years of opposition resistance in the city. The planned evacuation was however delayed. While a war monitor said the reason was unclear, an opposition official blamed Shiite militias and liked to President Bashar al-Assad for the hold-up. Protesters took to the streets of Brazil's largest city of Sao Paulo on Tuesday after senators passed a 20-year public spending ceiling as part of an austerity drive. President Michel Temer has been struggling to restore fiscal discipline amid an economic recession and political crisis. Brazil's leftist opposition said the spending cap would cripple public education and health services. Peruvian anti-drug units dressed as Santa Claus raided a suspected drug house and arrested four alleged drug traffickers in the Lima district of Comas. Video footage showed the disguised police members taking weapons out of their Christmas sack before raiding the property. One of the arrested men was being led out by police. A woman was heard shouting abuse at him. <laughs> The chief of the raid squad said using disguises in the operation facilitates the element of speed and surprise. The Star Wars universe landed at London's South Bank on Tuesday with stormtroopers standing guard at the Tate Modern for the launch of the Rogue One. Instead of walking the red carpet, actors Felicity Jones, Mass Mickelson and Forrest Whitaker showcased their film at the art gallery. Rogue One, about a maverick rebel force who mount an almost suicide mission to steal plans for the Imperial Death Star, is set just before the very first Star Wars epic, A New Hope. It is expected to make more than $300 million at the global box office this weekend. And that wraps up our bulletin, may the force be with you.